I'm Dr. Michelle O'Donoghue reporting for Medscape. Joining me today is Dr. Harmony Reynolds. She's the director of the Soder Center for Women's Cardiovascular Research at NYU Langone Health. Welcome, Harmony. Thank you so much, Dr. O'Donoghue. Pleased to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining me because we're just coming off the heels of the American Heart Association scientific sessions. And your presentation, I have to say, was, was really one of the more interesting ones. Um, you know, it, it touches upon uh, the field of Minoka, which has been very poorly understood. So perhaps you could just lead off by walking us through the, the top line findings from your study. Sure, thanks. Uh, we enrolled women who had MI and were being referred for cardiac catheterization to evaluate their MI. So the referring physicians expected that they were sending them for revascularization. But we knew that some of them would have Minoka. And in those women who had Minoka, they had multivessel OCT of the coronary arteries, and then they had cardiac MRI within a week. We found that between those two imaging tests, we were able to find an underlying cause of the Minoka presentation in 85%. And most of those, two-thirds of the women overall, had findings pointing to myocardial infarction as the cause of their presentation. But one in five had an alternate diagnosis, like myocarditis. In only 15% could we find no abnormal imaging to explain that presentation. I think it's just such a huge contribution because, you know, as I look back at, at just even the, the patients that I've cared for over the years, you know, I have to admit that so many of us have been guilty of having individuals, whether women or men, who have come in with chest pain symptoms, have had a classic presentation for an acute coronary syndrome. We send them to the cath lab. We don't see any obstructive coronary disease. And we've essentially patted them on the back and said, good news. You know, you don't have any coronary disease. There must be some alternate explanation. And we have basically tried to impart the message that that alternate explanation is it probably of no consequence. So I think that this is very important for advancing the field because as you're highlighting, we are now uncovering that in fact, many of these individuals, specifically women in your study, who have no obstructive coronary disease, in fact, do have an atherosclerotic origin um, for their presentation. It's true, and prior studies have shown that they do accrue events. So it's good news in the sense that the event rate is lower than if they have obstructive coronary disease, but it's definitely higher than people who are, don't have MI at all. So there's a 24% major adverse cardiovascular event rate after Minoka based on the Sweetheart Registry and an 11% five-year mortality. So it's not a great thing to have. But we did show that much of this is atherosclerotic. 46% of the women who had OCT had a culprit lesion. And almost all of the culprit lesions were either plaque rupture or some sign of early healed plaque rupture. And I suppose at this point, we don't have a complete understanding of why the anatomy for a woman or a man might differ in the sense that, you know, why might a woman be more likely to have plaque erosion and less sort of classic obstructive coronary disease than, than a man? Yeah, it's really interesting to think of these smaller plaques are rupturing and then rising to the clinical level of being an MI, a Minoka event. Whereas in someone else, and I would say in men, right, maybe that rupture event is not really rising to clinical significance. And I'd love to understand more as the next steps about why that is. So we have a, a basic science project that Jeffrey Berger at NYU is leading, trying to look at thrombosis in these women to try and understand that question. But you bring up plaque erosion, and that's a really interesting idea. So we thought that there would be a lot of plaque erosion in these women because pathologic studies have shown that in sudden death victims, plaque erosion and young women, that tends to be an association that we see. So we thought that would be a big cause of Minoka. But surprisingly, many of these were rupture. Uh, and if they weren't rupture, then they were an intraplaque cavity or a healed plaque. And all of that really is on the spectrum of plaque rupture rather than erosion. So I was surprised by that. Yeah, and would obviously have important therapeutic implications because currently a lot of people who have Minoka are, are going home without any additional therapy. So based on this, um, well, I guess the two natural questions are, you know, first, do you think that um, routine OCT imaging and cardiac MR should be performed on all patients in whom they have an ACS presentation without clear evidence of, of obstructive coronary disease? And then part two would be, you know, how do we then treat those patients? Yeah, I mean, these are great questions. So let me start with your question about what kind of imaging should we be doing routinely in Minoka patients? I think that cardiac MRI is a slam dunk. We know that we may be able to find myocarditis on the MRI, and that's really important because those patients need none of the usual secondary prevention medications, 
And it's a different diagnosis. You know, if we have an alternate diagnosis to MI, we should be making that. And I feel so strongly about it that I think that it's worth getting people back, you know, within the week as we tried to do in this study or even getting them to an academic medical center if they don't have access to cardiac MRI. I think patients should be getting an MRI very soon. And I think that's true for pretty much everybody uh, who's qualified for an MI. Uh, MRI, if for some reason you have a contraindication, of course, that's a different thing. OCT is more challenging because it's not available as widely as cardiac MRI is, and the local interpretation may not be as uh, robust uh, in some medical centers. But I hope that we will move towards a situation where OCT is used more routinely because we saw plenty of patients in the study who had an OCT culprit lesion and didn't have anything major abnormal on their MRI. And those patients might be told nothing is wrong if they're not getting an OCT. So I hope that in the future we'll be using OCT more. And cardiac MRI, I think, should be pretty much routine now. Now, your question about treatment. And if we don't know uh, what we have on the OCT, for example, or even for that matter on the MRI, I'm usually treating now with antiplatelet therapy with a statin, and then a calcium channel blocker. And the calcium blocker is not based directly on our findings because we didn't do spasm provocation testing. We couldn't. It was just too much with three vessel OCT. But we had a number of patients who had MI or ischemic injury on their cardiac MR, and they didn't have an OCT culprit lesion. And we think many of those were spasm. And since calcium blockers are the treatment for spasm, I am advocating until we have clinical trial data we're using calcium blockers in those patients. That, that's just really incredibly helpful. And I, I think that this is going to be an eye opener for a lot of practitioners who, who again, have, have maybe been dismissing symptoms um, in the absence of, of obstructive coronary disease. Um, do you think, are there any other takeaway messages that you would like clinicians to, to walk away with? And, and I guess maybe one additional question too would be, did you see any risks um, with the OCT being done routinely? Because I know that there are interventionalists who are worried about potentially unearthing plaques or, you know, disrupting what what, what previously was not a problem if you do routine intracoronary imaging? Yeah, with routine OCT in multiple vessels, we had no complications. There was transient spasm. There were plenty of people who needed intracoronary nitro, but no MIs, no dissection, no thrombosis. Uh, it was very safe in our study, which is fairly small, but uh, still, I think with 145 women, we felt comfortable that there were no complications, at least in our study. Um, so I think the main message really is most Minoka is MI. Most of it is ischemic in origin, and you should treat those patients accordingly. Well, I think that that's just tremendously helpful. So thank you again, Harmony, for joining me today. And I can see that this is going to lend itself to a lot of future directions of research. So congratulations. Thanks so much.